The leading causes for bacterial meningitis in the United States are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Group B Streptococcus, Neisseria meningitidis, Haemophilus influenzae, and Listeria monocytogenes. Today, we will talk about Neisseria meningitidis, which causes meningococcal infection. Here are the objectives for this lecture. Analyze the risk factors contributing to meningococcal disease. Assess clinical manifestations and identify rapid progression of meningococcal disease. Formulate an individualized nursing care plan and prioritize nursing interventions. Evaluate the client's responses to treatment and modify care accordingly. Provide appropriate patient education. Neisseria meningitidis is a non-modal gram-negative diplococcus. That is, its shape appears to be like two beads connected to each other. Like Haemophilus influenzae, Neisseria meningitidis also forms capsule. The capsule increases virulence and allows antigenic classification. In addition, Neisseria meningitidis also releases immunoglobulin A protease to disable immunoglobulin A, allowing the bacteria to invade through the protective barrier of respiratory mucosa. The other important structure of Neisseria meningitidis is the pili, which allows the bacteria to hold on to the mucosa surface. In addition to being one of the most common causes of bacterial meningitis, Neisseria meningitidis also can cause meningococcemia. Both meningococcal infections have abrupt onset of intense manifestations and the conditions progress rapidly. Meningococcal infections are prevalent in winter and early spring. Neisseria meningitidis generally infect children younger than age of 2 years, adolescents between age 15 to 18 years, and people living in disadvantaged socioeconomic environments. Please note that this infection favors environment that allows opportunities for close contacts among people, like school. Hot and dry climate could add to the risk for promoting infection. The other risk factor includes recent upper respiratory infection caused by viral or mycoplasma microorganisms. After contact with the contaminated respiratory droplet, Neisseria meningitidis localizes at nasopharyngeal mucosa, incubates for 2 to 10 days. Patients experience an abrupt onset of general signs and symptoms of infection with clinical manifestations of fever, chills, malaise, muscle aches, vomiting, and prostration. As the bacteria invades into bloodstream, it disseminates and causes infections of meningitis and meningococcemia. With meningitis, patients manifest with increased intracranial pressure as the inflammation and adhesion of the pia arachnoid membrane blocks the flow of CSF. Neurological signs and symptoms include headache, drowsiness, fever, neck stiffness, altered consciousness, seizures, and comatose. Neisseria meningitidis caused meningitis may or may not be accompanied by meningocosemia, which is life-threatening. It manifests as macular papular rash, petechiae, pupura, and sepsis. The affected circulation leads to cold and pale extremities, leg pain. When the condition evolves rapidly, septic shock could happen, leading to further complications. The circulatory complication of disseminated intravascular coagulation leads to digital gangrene. If not promptly treated, loss of digits or limbs could result. Complications of neurological damages include hearing loss, cranial nerve palsies, obstructive hydrocephalus, and disabilities. Medical diagnosis is confirmed by culture of CSF and blood. Prompt treatment before result of culture is the key to survival. Without treatment, the mortality rate is 80%. Prevention is available with administration of vaccination. Medical treatments include hospitalization immediately. Intensive care could be indicated to maintain airway patency and or to manage shock. Insert endotracheal tube and give IV fluid and vessopressin as indicated. 
immediately administer IV penicillin or cefotaxime, ceftriaxone, or ampicillin. If the patient is allergic to penicillin, use chloramphenicol. Prophylactic measures for close contacts include administering rifampin, ceftriaxone, ciprofloxacin, and azithromycin. Report infection to public health authority as meningococcal disease is a reportable infection. Initiate droplet isolation until 24 hours after effective IV antibiotic was administered. Maintain airway patency. Have emergency equipment available. Monitor and support ventilation. Maintain and care for endotracheal tube. Manage shock. Know that the disease progresses rapidly. Strict intake and output. Monitor and maintain adequate fluid intake. And at the same time, avoid fluid overload, which can cause increased intracranial pressure. Ensure patient safety. Administer medication as prescribed. Chloramphenicol is a broad-spectrum antibiotic. Due to its fatal adverse effect of aplastic anemia, it is reserved and used only for a life-threatening infection that other antibiotic options are exhausted. Chloramphenicol can cause acute liver damage. Patient may manifest with jaundice. This medication is only used under consistent surveillance, meaning in an inpatient setting. Support the family and the patient. Identify the close contact who might need prophylactic treatment. Recovery may be long. Coordinate rehabilitation for the patient. Patient education should include droplet isolation until 24 hours after administration of the effective antibiotic. Monitor and report signs and symptoms of adverse effects. Follow through scheduled vaccination as recommended. There are two vaccinations for meningococcal disease, Menville and Menectra. Menville can be given at younger age, two months old, and Menectra should be given when the infant is at least nine months old. Routine vaccination is administered as a series of two doses, given at age 11 to 12 years, and second dose at 16 years of age. Thank you for taking this lecture. 